We are back on the Rational Boomer podcast. Hopefully your day is going well. It is Sunday. Sunday today. And usually during the weekend, things get a little laid back. Not as much activity. Not this Sunday. Not Saturday. It's been busy as a motherfucker. And to give me a hand today, we bring in Jace from Texas. He's a listener of the show. He's been on the show a number of times. Jace, thanks for joining us tonight. Well, hey, Mike, thanks for having me. I I don't know what we're going to talk about. There's nothing really going on. Yeah, nothing, nothing. <laughs> you know, there was a lot of things I was planning on talking about with you, and we will do that. But of course, the big news uh, was that Iran attacked Israel. So now everybody's talking about it. All the media outlets are talking about it. And uh, I got the impression that you had the attack, and it's not an ongoing attack. It was drone strikes. But as I understand, it's kind of pulled back now. It's not a consistent attack, but it doesn't matter. It's going to piss off Israel and cause all kinds of other problems. Yeah, and a lot of people are, of course, everybody has their opinion and you know, a lot of people are saying, well, did you expect them not to retaliate after, I guess, they killed one of their commanders? I mean, it's, I, I mean, it's just a, it's, it's, it's just a clusterfuck. I mean, it, you know, it, it's always been there. Then, you know, yeah. you know, glorious Donald Trump, you know, if I was president, this wouldn't have happened. You know, it's like, mm, always about you, 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 you. Well, I have a theory and I'll see if you can. If you follow along with what I'm saying and, and, and agree or disagree, you're, you're welcome to do either. I say this happened because of Donald Trump. And see if you can follow what I'm saying here. It's a little long and convoluted. We know Israel was attacked by Hamas. They've been fighting. I don't even get into that debate because I've got no dog in the fight and there's no winning whatever side you take. I have opinions about it, but I'm not going to express it because it just doesn't pay off. So anyway, here's what we know now. Iran has attacked Israel with drone strikes. Now, what's interesting about this whole scenario is we know Iran supports Hamas. Iran was kind of behind giving Hamas the courage and the weaponry and stuff like that to attack Israel. But the interesting thing was when Hamas attacked Israel, it was a surprise. Nobody thought they would be able to do that, but they did, and they were quite successful. So Iran supports Hamas. Russia supports Iran. Now, the question is, why would Ra Iran want to get involved in this? Well, why the fuck not? He want, they want to uh, take away the attention from the Ukraine war because they're getting a lot of bad press with that, and they need to focus the attention someplace else. And I also think it's to create some discord in America, maybe affect the upcoming election, try to give Joe Biden a tough time with it. Personally, I think they're going to give Joe Biden an opportunity to be a hero in this thing, but we'll wait and see about that. But the question is, we know now uh, how why Russia might be behind this all, but the question is how? And the question is really easily answered. If you remember back shortly after the inauguration of Donald Trump. There was a meeting in the Oval Office, and people were in an uproar, because in that meeting, in the Oval Office, were at least two Russian spies that they identified afterwards. Two Russian spies. Now, Donald Trump's a new president. He doesn't know how everything works. Oh, my God, it's, it's just mistakes and problems, because he's new. He's fucking new. Anyway, it was reported that in that meeting, he inadvertently, you know, inadvertently revealed some classified military documents to these Russian spies. The interesting thing is it was later reported that those military documents, those classified documents, were Israeli military documents, not American military documents. Now, I know that was quite a while ago. But things don't, you know, people say, well, why didn't they do it the next day? That's not how it fucking works. This is set up for a long time. So Russia has some intel on Israel. They push Iran. Iran pushes Hamas, gives them what they need, tells them the information to beat the defense in Israel, and they do. It's a long daisy chain, but it seems realistic to me. And frankly, that's how shit goes on, on an international level. There's a lot of strategizing. There's a lot of bullshit. There's a lot of stealing of information, and it takes time to put it together. I'm not saying it absolutely happened that way, but it sure seems suspicious. 
And plus, we don't know about all the documents that were at Mar-a-Lago, what, in the bathroom that that case right. in Florida is going on. I mean, we, who knows? I mean, that's that's one of the things about somebody <clears throat> that's, that's in debt a lot that it wouldn't make a good leader because, you know, that I mean, they can be bought. And, you know, it, you know, it's like what happened with Kavanaugh. His bills were supposedly paid off. You know, who does he owe money to? And there was also, I think a lot of people forget, you know, it's like they try to compare what Trump Trump's documents to Biden's. I mean, it, it's not even a it's not even a race. I mean, you talk about, I mean, Biden and Pence, to his credit, you know, they gave up they gave their documents. They probably how many times have. You had something you you took with you from work that maybe I mean that's exactly what P Pence and Biden probably did. They took stuff that you know they shouldn't have taken, but I mean it's so obvious with all the boxes and you know and, and now it's coming out that supposedly the uh, the guy that helps Trump out was you know telling the, what the FBI or whoever was doing the ra the raid that you know they were mislabeling boxes on purpose. I read that somewhere. Wow. And people don't and people don't forget is I, I when Trump was president. He had those few minutes or I don't know how long it was, but he, him and Putin were by themselves. Right. Who knows what a couple hell. of can times you, I, I can, I'm old enough to remember when Obama was on the plane, I guess, or he was with, with some attorney general or something. And, and all these conspiracies came out about, you know, what were they talking about, you know, and, or was it Clinton? I, I couldn't remember, but it was something to where they had a meeting and it was two Americans meeting. Right. There was more of an uproar about that than, and then, by, then Trump meeting with uh, Putin by himself, who knows what they were talking about? Well, and the thing about Donald Trump is, and I've said this before on the show and on TikToks, Donald Trump, given his narcissism, he is susceptible to being manipulated, very easily manipulated. All you have to do is pat him on the back, tell him he's a genius, and he'll do whatever you want him to do and then act as if yep. it's his idea. And if you want a perfect illustration of that, they're trying to pass the FISA bill in Congress, right? Mike Johnson wants to get it passed, but they shut it down. And why do they shut it down? Because Donald Trump said shut it down. Well, they ultimately got it passed. But Donald Trump was purposely trying to stick it in the ass of Mike Johnson, trying to embarrass him because he's trying to get him to not put up the Ukraine thing and all that stuff. So Donald Trump goes at Mike Johnson. Now, Mike Johnson's in trouble. So... He goes down to Mar-a-Lago to buddy up, to pal up, to hug, to kiss his dirty diaper ass with Donnie Trump. Donnie Trump flips on a fucking dime. Oh, this is my buddy now. This is my buddy now, which put the MAGA people in a weird situation. He basically made Marjorie Taylor Greene look like a fucking idiot, which, which isn't hard to do, but it made it worse. But that's how Donald Trump works. If Donald Trump were mad at me, I would say and I wanted him to like me, I just say, let me go down there. I'd bring him a gift. I'd kiss him on the cheek and tell him he's a genius. And then we'd be best buddies. And that's exactly what Vladimir Putin did to him. That's exactly what Viktor Orban, uh, um, Kim Jong-un, they understand this. They're smart people and they know how to manipulate this guy. That's why I've said when he came into office, I don't think he was evil. I just think he was a useful idiot. And the evil yeah. people used him to every extent until he became evil. Yeah. And that's I mean, you just have to you do have to look at it because he is a useful idiot because it's like, you know, who I mean, you know, I mean, Russia, you know, they interfered in 2016 because they didn't want Hillary up there. You know, say what you want to about Hillary, but she ain't a goddamn traitor. No. You know, and um, it's it's just and, and it's and it's the thing with Trump is that it's like he turns on a dime because it's like you you mentioned, Mike. He doesn't he doesn't think ahead. He doesn't like everything you see Biden, Obama, Clinton, hell, even kind of Bush. You know, they they kind of look at the long term kind of effects of what's going to happen, and and you know. And on and and say what you want to about you know the Republicans before you know they were the ones that weren't about themselves they were about you know the country pretty much there was a fucked up way of doing it yeah but it was like when he was in that meeting Trump was president and he started talking about you know in front of the cabinet I can't remember it's such a it's, it's such a it's a clown show every day with him but he was talking about you know banning guns and he was talking and it was like and it's like people were like, what? 
you know, and it's like he was talking, well, maybe you should ban the gun, you know, you know, it can kill somebody here. I mean, it's he doesn't he, he doesn't have a long term. He, he's in survival mode, like you said, and he's been spoiled and he's been coddled. So it's all about him. Hell, did you see that thing the other day that he was talking about all hell's breaking loose? Yeah. Uh, on Monday, did you notice that it didn't say the RNC? It said the TNC. I think a lot of people missed that. TNC. I don't know if it was. I, oh, I, the Trump, Trump NC? mentioned. Wow. I mean, it it has become it, the the. I mean, you talk about Reagan and, and Lincoln spinning in their graves. I mean, you know, I know Ronald Reagan was a lot of stuff, but I mean, we used to like fight Russia. He, you know, he he didn't bring down the wall himself, but I remember a time when Republicans stood up to Russia. But it's it's. I mean, it's it's just it's amazing to watch, and it's 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 like Russia's doing all this stuff, and they've inflated and and infiltrated, and and a lot of it Trump let them in. I mean, yeah. Trump has been the useful idiot to get this shit done. Regardless of what uh, the Trump fucks say, Russia has never been, isn't now, and never will be our friend. They are our adversaries, and they will do anything to create unrest or chaos in our country regardless of what the Republicans say. And that should be understood. You know, the thing with, with politicians, flip-flopping is a common problem amongst politicians. But Donald Trump, this motherfucker is just blatant about it. And the best possible way you can show that he uh, um, um, flip-flops is on the abortion issue. He goes out and he tells everybody, oh, I, I myself alone overturned Roe v. Wade. I get the credit for it. It's an amazing thing. And then when he's questioned about it recently, um, this whole Arizona thing went off and he said, "What? Well, you overturned Roe v. Wade. What's, what's your deal? And he said, well, we thought we would send it back to the states, which he was making himself look stupid at that point because we were dealing with Arizona who did a fucked up thing. And then they asked, would you sign and uh, uh uh, national ban on abortion. And he said, no, Donald Trump put himself in a bad fucking position. He's trying to uh, stra straddle the fence because apparently Republicans just now figured out that the abortion thing, it's not a winner. That's a loser for them. They just realized that. So now he's trying to placate the people, the 75% of the people that support Roe v. Wade while trying to keep his base happy. But what he did there basically is pissed off the evangelicals, pissed off the radical right, because they want an all-out ban. And he just said, there won't be an all-out ban if I'm president. But he's thinking, well, maybe the 75% will like me more because I'm easing up on it. No, motherfucker, you're the one that said you overturn Roe v. Wade. They hate your guts, and they will continue to hate their guts and your guts until it's codified. This is how dumb he is. He flip-flops, and he thinks he can adjust his situation all the time, and he thinks he's smart enough to talk himself out of every situation, and clearly he's not. Well, I think when he talks, he, he thinks he's talking himself out of a situation. What sounds good to him, he thinks we're all we're as dumb as his base because he said something about, well, everybody right and left wanted, you know, Roe v. Wade versus Turn. That's not true. No, it's and not it, true it, at all. If he's done anything, he's exposed the, the evangelicals and the right and that they wanted a total abortion ban because I grew up as an evangelical, you know, and I remember that I was told that, you know, not even with rape, not even with incest, because that is a God giving child. You can't do that, you know, even with, you know, the, you know, with, you know, but I don't think they ever anticipated that women would die from it to them. It was just like, oh, you're having these abortions because you're a slut, you know, and it's shaming women that, you know, it's birth control. That's the way I was always taught that abortion was. So, of course, most of my life when I was younger, I didn't know any better. I well, no, abortion's bad. Abortion's bad. So they have literally caught the dog and the, the, the dog is literally trying to drive the fucking car right now. And the car ain't fucking going nowhere right? because they got caught with this shit. And it's, it's exposing a lot more because it's showing that a lot of Republican are okay with abortion. If it's their daughter or somebody in their family, right, but they right. don't want me or you to have that. And I think that's, what's really pissing people off now with Trump. I mean, it's the way the wind blows. I mean, it's, I mean, he he's sitting there saying, well, leave it up to the states. But he at the same time, like you said, he's saying, oh, I got rid of abortion. Me alone. They tried for 50 years to do it. I did it myself. 
And it's like you have some Republicans that are taking the ball and running with that. Like Mike Johnson's like one of those. I think he's a total abortion ban, too. Yeah, absolutely. And, and then like with Arizona, you know, and now Trump's like, well, they need to overturn this or even Sean Hannity. Well, the Democrats need no, the fucking Democrats don't need to do nothing. The Democrats need to expose what this is, win on this election and then do something when they have power. The Republicans have gotten themselves into this. They want the Democrats to fix it, which Democrats have a history of doing. They don't need to fix it. They need to let the fucking Republicans choke on this. They do. And, you know, the ironic thing about Hannity, he went on television and he was appalled by what happened in Arizona. But the fact of the matter is Hannity said many times he's fully against abortion. Yes. So why in the world would he be frantic about getting this fixed in Arizona votes. if he's against? Well, the votes. Exactly. He under, he's smart enough to understand that this is a fucking election killer. And that's what I don't understand. After they overturned Roe v. Wade, we went to 2022, the midterms. Everybody said there's going to be a red wave, and there wasn't. That should have been a watershed moment where they said, hmm, we fucked up. Maybe we should change our stance or at least soften it. It's not what they did. They fucking doubled down. They tripled down. So I don't know if that is a matter of stupidity or so arrogant they think they can shove it down people's throats until they like it. That's not going to work either. It just amazes me how oblivious and how incompetent all of the Republican Party is. Well, you look at Ohio, they they had that thing turn out to where they put the abortion on there. And I think the voters voted on that and the legislators still weren't allowing it. I mean, it's like it's it's like, you know, you hear Republicans all the time. Oh, the will of the people, you know, the the silent majority. I mean, it's not it's it's authoritarian is what the Republicans have become. I mean, it's like, you know, they 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 want you. I mean, it's getting to the point, Mike, to where, you know, it's like they want you to worship their God. They want you. I mean, but uh, I mean, you look at the, the I know we aren't like happy about polls, but you look at all the research posts. People aren't religious what they were before. I mean, no, no. you can be a Christian, but I don't necessarily have to be a Christian. But they're telling, you know, it, it's so funny growing up. I was always told about the Antichrist, and if you don't take the mark, they will kill you because you don't accept Jesus. Well, it looks, the way I grew up, it's looking like the reverse. Like, if I don't accept Jesus or their Jesus, I will be killed. Trump has right. said that. Right. He said he's going to, I told a buddy of mine, he, he's a, a guy I work with, and we're both, we're, we both just, you know, we, we don't understand. We see all these people, and these people we see that are smart, and they're still going for this stuff. And I go, when Trump says stuff, and especially like to the Latinos, that he's going to wound up, you know, he's talking about the Latinos. He ain't just talking about the illegals. He's no. talking about anybody that doesn't look like them, because what they want to do is they want to preserve the right, the white race. That's why the abortion thing's a big deal. That's why, you know, that that's why they're OK with somebody like Russia, because, you know, they're white. the same color. Yeah. I mean, and it's like and you say that, well, that's racist. No, that's what they're doing. Yeah, it when is he racist, says Latinos, he says all Latinos. He's not he didn't he didn't say the Mexicans are coming. He said the Mexicans, they're coming over here. I mean, it's it's like they don't look any different, but he has all this support. And I think he does, because I look down here in Texas and I see it. I mean, I don't think, you know, I don't think it's as broad as he thinks it is. I'm hoping it's not. But it's just it makes no sense. And no. it's like, well, they're going to deport the people, the, the the atheist and they're going to put, you know, the Hispanics. I'm like, well, were they going to deport me to because I'm not Hispanic, but, you know, I'm not an atheist. But in their mind, I am. Where are they going to deport me to? I mean, it, it's just it's it's like what Germany went through. And, you know, I mean, it, it, you, you, you just read the history. I mean, it's repeating itself about when he calls people vermin. And yeah, I mean, he, I mean, it, it's and it's not just against, you know, it's mind-boggling that smart people still support this guy. Yeah, it, it is truly amazing. And I, I want to see if you agree with me here. I've been saying this for a while, and some people have disagreed with me. But when Donald Trump first started <laughs> as president, um, it seemed like he could get away with anything. It seemed like he could slip out of anything. He could get bailed out of everything. He was forgiven for everything. 
But we got to a point about a year ago when things started to slip a little bit. He was starting to be a little bit accountable. He was starting to get caught up in things, starting to get some bad press and that sort of thing. And at that point, I said, there's kind of a paradigm shift. We're starting to head the other way. And that's typical with narcissists. You have the ramp up and it can be quite successful, but they always get to the peak and then they start the descent. And that descent is like a snowball. It gets bigger and faster as it goes. And I think we're finally at that point where it's actually um, actually something that we can recognize. He's got a lot of stuff going against him. He's got this criminal trial coming up uh, tomorrow. He's got uh, this, this bond issue that's not going to go his way. And Letitia James is going to have a dirty diaper Donnie Trump fucking garage sale. Uh, and, and then you, of course, got his true social thing that was going to be his savior, and now it's taken a shit. It seems like everything now with Donald Trump is working against him. He can't delay trials. He can't do all this stuff. I think we went over that that mountaintop, and we're on the descent, and we're in that spiral for the ultimate crash, which is coming soon. I think you're right. I think even the media is kind of starting to see it because I think the media has been at fault a long time for it. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, we talk about polls, but now even the polls are turning. Yeah. And it's like it's I was listening to uh, I mean, I I, 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 I listen to your podcast, but I, I still listen to MSNBC. I, I do have respect for like Joe Scarborough. He pisses me off sometimes. Yeah. But he said it the other day on a, but I listened to yours last because yours is the most hopeful and the most honest and it, it gets all the other bullshit out of my mind. You don't have to apologize. I listen to, I listen to MSNBC. I listen yeah, to well, I listen to Lawrence. I listen to Morning Joe at my desk and stuff. But, you know, I always make sure to listen to you last because you wrap it up and you put it in perspective that the other Thank guys you. didn't get right. Um, Joe Scarborough said it. He goes, I go talk to Republicans and even MAGA people. And back in 2020, they were just like, God. They were just, you know, that's I think a lot, a lot of them are like, you know, I don't think he's got the cross, the, the appeal like he did before. No, I don't think his support is, is is there because I think people are just tired. I mean, you still have your MAGA hate, you still have your MAGA lovers, but I think a lot of people are like, he always plays a victim and there's got to come a point. It's like, dude, again, you know, like tonight saying, well, if I was in charge, Israel wouldn't be under this. You have no freaking, I mean, that's been going on before you were even thought of. Yeah. Come on, yeah. dude. But I think you're right. I think it's finally, I, I know one thing. I think the judges are finally getting tired of it. Uh, spe especially the one that's doing the one on Monday. I mean, God dang, what? He tried 10 times to get out of this. And they said he's going to sue the judge. Um, I mean, it's like, it's getting to the point to where it's like, I mean, it's, it's gotta be fatigue, you know what I mean? And it, it, that's what it's nice about Biden is that you don't hear about Biden all the time. You don't hear about Kamala. You, I mean, every time you heard about Trump, Trump, you hear more about Trump than anything. It, it's gotta be exhausting. You'd be on the diehards. I would hope. Yeah. Well, Donald Trump tried to delay the Manhattan district case 11 times. And then yesterday he tried it again. 12. Wow. 12 times he tried. And again, he lost every time because every time he comes up, it's just bullshit. They got to know that it's not going to work. I, I think it's like they're throwing the dice and hope something catches, but it's just not going to catch. I got to be honest with you. I think Donald Trump is the most frightened he's been right now. Everybody's worried about all the other cases. Are they going to happen before the election? I don't think none of that. I don't think any of that matters. This court case is going to be the undoing, just like you know, we were waiting for the indictments and nobody did it. And nobody did it. Then Alvin Bragg did it. It seems fitting that he would have the first criminal trial. It may not be the most devastating criminal trial, but it still is 34 felony charges. That's a fucking problem. I, you know, and I, and I think the media is doing it a disservice because I do listen to Michael Cohen and his podcast. Um, I, a lot of people don't like him. They said he lied or whatever, but the guy has owned up to his mistakes. He's, you know, he's done it. I mean, he, he has a good podcast. He has good points. I mean, that guy went to prison for the stuff that Donald Trump directed him to do. Right. And it's a disservice when they call it a hush money case. It's not yeah. a hush money case. No, it's and not. I saw, uh, of course, a New York times, something said, well, most Americans look at this, the most petty. Well, let me tell you something. There's a history lesson. They didn't get Al Capone on the bootlegging or the yeah. murdering. They got him on tax evasion. And and, so and, fr and frankly, takes, you know, I don't care what they get them on. Honestly, 
I, I've said yeah. I, I've said before, Donald Trump wants to extend this past the election because he thinks he's going to win and then he'll no. be able to shut it down. He's not going to win. There is no chance for him to win. If we were only talking about the overturning of Roe v. Wade, that's enough to sink it for him. But he's going to have all this other shit. So my premise is if this takes him out of the mix with multiple convictions, all these others, even if they all take place after the election, Donald Trump will not be a president. He will not be a candidate for president. All of a sudden, he has no protections. People will have walked away from him because he failed in the election, and the Republicans will see him as a loser. Donnie Trump's going to sit be sitting there all by himself like the mouse and the cheese, and he is just going to get fucking hammered. He won't have the control over the media. He won't have the support of the Republicans. He is just going to get smashed into the ground. So I'm fine with the Manhattan district happening now and waiting for the other three. It's just going to be devastating to him when that happens. Yeah. My only point was about Capone was it, 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 they got him on something. It always isn't the most, you know, that isn't always the most tax evasion. I mean, you're still, it's still a crime Fine. and it's like, it, it's still a crime. And it's like, you know, it's, it's called hush money. I mean, th that's given disservice, but the thing about, what I know that Trump's scared is because he did that little press conference yesterday with his, I call, I call Mike Johnson a puppet of a Putin puppet. That's, you know, cause that's what Trump is. Right. You know, they're already trying to do this, you know, this thing about, you know, all this, you know, election fraud and stuff. And I, and I'm thinking that it's really, I mean, like I said, he doesn't have the appeal that it does anymore. There was a article I saw some TikTok. I think it was a hawk talking about an Atlantic uh, article talking about how the right wing, uh, the right wing news, they're, they're not getting the traffic they did before because yeah. Facebook isn't making the poly that thing. So, so it's like the, the, all the views they used to get with that misinformation, they're not getting anymore. Right. So he's, he had that in his pocket before to do that. But I think it's kind of like we were talking before. I think it's a little bit of the, you know, kind of the, the tiredness of it. You know, it's like, it's like when he's going out there, he's doing his greatest hits from 2016, you know, 2020. Oh, it's rigged. It's a fake election. You know, Hillary said it was rigged, you know, and to her detriment, she was right. But she also conceded the election. He still hasn't conceded the 2020 election. He's still right. talking about that. And I don't know about you, Mike, but it's 2024 going to be 2025. They're already talking about 2028. You know, I mean, it, it's like he knows that I, I think he I think in the back of his mind, he knows that that I mean, you talk about yeah, he can you know raise all this money, but it's it, it's the small donors that are doing you know I I'm a small donor I donate to Biden I donate to Colin Allred, you know I I don't give them you know the two thousand dollars is the maximum I give them the small one that I can afford right and that's not what Trump's getting anymore he got that before and that was bread and butter but he's bled bled those people so dry that he's got to know in the back of and somewhere. And, and if he doesn't know the people around him know, and you talk about the catch up flying, it's going to get worse in the next few weeks, Monday, it, Monday, it's, it's going to be, he could, I mean, I know he can't fire his lawyers without the judge's consent, but I mean, is Donnie start faking an illness? Does he get that desperate? But he may well, not because he doesn't want to look weak, you know? Yeah, right. that's, that's exactly right. People say, well, he'll just get sick. And I don't see that happening. It's like, like saying somebody like Donald Trump, a narcissist, would commit suicide. That would never happen because they think they're the most important person yeah. in the world. They, they'll kill somebody else before they kill themselves. Oh, yeah. But but in terms of in terms of getting sick, that poses two problems. First of all, it makes him look weak in his mind. Second of all, it puts more question in whether he is capable of being president. He'll never do that in spite of the fact that people think he might. And that's the, one of the things that bug me. When we're coming up on this uh, this Monday trial, I still have Democrats coming to me and saying, oh, but this could happen or this could happen. They're always waiting for the other shoe to drop. They're kind of fatalistic about what they think. They're sure something's going to happen and it's never going to happen. So I'm going to pout and think of all these things that could happen. I hope when this trial starts and this goes, the Democrats that think like that finally get their fucking head straight. There is a time when you can't slip out anymore. There is a time when you're done. And Donald Trump, in my mind right now, as of Monday, is completely done. 
And those same Democrats, they always keep underestimating Joe Biden. Yeah. I remember the Texas primary a few years ago. Um, I voted for I, I didn't vote for Biden because I thought he was done. I voted for um, God. What was his name? Who was the guy in the New York, the billionaire? In New um, York. Bloomberg? Yeah, I voted for Bloomberg. Okay. I read his book. I, I like the guy. He's he's not my ideal guy, but I thought Biden was done. And what I did, Biden came back and did it. Yeah. They, you know, I voted for him ever since then, but they count him out all the time and they shouldn't. Yeah, he's older. He, he you know, he ain't, he ain't he ain't perfect. I like Joe Biden. I always have. I've said that before. I'm a Biden fan. I'm not a I don't have a flag on my truck or anything, you know, Biden sticker or nothing like that. But I, I think he's done a great job. I think history will judge him a lot better than what he's I mean, because we think about, you know, I tell people that, too, about, you know, God, I can remember all those semi trucks full of bodies during the COVID thing. You know, right, Biden, right. I mean, he didn't cure. He didn't cure it, but he let us out of it. Well, you know, you know is, he, is he perfect? No, but he's a lot better than the alternative. You know, the the, the Trump fans will always say, well, Donald Trump got that warp speed thing and got the vaccine ready, which is true. But what happened when he got it ready? He had no way to distribute it. Nobody no. could get the fucking vaccine. It wasn't until Joe Biden came in and set up a system in quick order and then started getting people the vaccine and things changed. You know, Donald Trump's not good at finishing. He's not good at doing anything. He's good at having other people do things and then take credit for it. But he's not smart enough to coordinate a distribution plan. All he wanted to say is, I got the vaccine. Aren't I a hero? But he couldn't finish the job. But Joe Biden ended up coming in and doing just that. Well, there was a thing that uh, Bob Woodward did on him. I think uh, he was on MSNBC talking about it, and he was playing the video. The I think Trump's suing him now for releasing the tapes. Yeah, right. And all Trump could say, oh, this damn COVID, this effing COVID, this COVID. I mean, he was blaming COVID. But you look at somebody like Joe Biden, and it's like he's 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 had more come his way. He doesn't make excuses. He gets to work. Like I saw, well, he cut a vacation sport and he scrambled back to the White House. Well, he, I mean, he, I mean, he warned us yesterday saying, hey, this is going to happen. And of course, the Republicans, well, you know, why did he tell people and make them worry? Because he wanted people to be for fucking prepared. That's what a leader does. Yeah. So all I heard, all I heard Trump was say. saying, all I heard Trump was saying was like, oh, this wasn't this COVID. This did it. It's like, yeah, you got COVID. But you, but you have to deal with it. That's what a leader does. That's what Obama did. Didn't Obama have to deal with Ebola? I mean, I mean, it, it, it's that's what when you're a president, it's nice, and you can't sit around and watch Fox News all day. No. You got to go out there and you got to lead. You know, that's what Biden did. That's what you know Obama did. That ain't what Trump did. Trump had his personal time or whatever. He had he had something come up. And I think people don't realize they don't they they they're too forgiving. Oh, the economy was better under Trump. What freaking planet are you on? Yeah, it's not you even know, close. It, we like to romance the past, but you know, the Democrats and also, and I think what they're doing is they need to remind people of what the shit we went through when he was president. Yeah, absolutely. It's a whole thing about how were you four years ago? Well, I was fucked. Yeah. You know, we had everything well, shut that down. That died out, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that didn't last very well. But but, you know, the th thing is what what Donald Trump did where he made his mistake. But this is classic Donald Trump when COVID hit. And it was going to be a problem and he clearly knew it was going to be a problem because he said that in that interview that you were talking about. He wasn't thinking about a million people dying in the country being shut down. What he was thinking about, how is this going to affect my election? This is going to make me look bad. So we'll just act like it didn't happen or not a big deal and we'll be fine. Well, he made the wrong choice there because COVID may have been one of the main reasons why he lost in 2020. Yeah, it exposed him to the weakness that he was, but... It's, it's like people have, people are too forgiving and they, they forget, you know, I, I just always picture the boxes of bodies in there. I knew through people that, you know, personally died for it, but you still had a lot of people from his word saying it was a hoax. Right. I mean, he literally said it was a hoax. Then he still. asked if he can see, he asked if he could shoot bleach in somebody. And I had my ex boss and I tell he go, he didn't say that. I go, I, he, he said that right to the doctor. And it's like, this guy is not stupid that said this and i'm like 
he said it. Well, he didn't mean it. I go, he said it. And there's a lot of people that believe he, when he says that. And, and it's, it's just like, I, you know, and I, and I honestly believe that a lot of those people died because of his negligence. He was worried about himself as he is to this day. How's this going to affect me? If I was in charge, Israel would be fine. You know, blow it out your ass, dude. I mean, come on, you know, get over yourself and, you know, you shouldn't be president. You should have somebody that, that somebody like Biden, somebody like Obama, hell, W would have probably done better than, than him. Oh, no question. But I mean, I mean, it's, it's, it's just, it's just incompetence. And it's like, like you said, what are they doing? They're just doubling down on this abortion. It's like they're doubling down on stupid. Yeah, it really is. You know, the funny thing about Donald Trump, he continually says stupid things. And as I've said, people just want to forgive him, the Trump fucks. And every time he says something stupid and he gets exposed for saying something stupid, it's inevitable. Politicians or his Trump fuck little buddies will say, you know, what he really meant. How about if Donald Trump just says what he really meant instead of you having to explain it away after the fact? No, we know what Donald Trump meant. He's not thinking about what he's saying. He doesn't have a grasp on what's real and what's decent. And he just nope. spews shit out. He's he's like a lot of people that are narcissists, for example. They're so arrogant and they think they're of themselves so highly. They think of anything coming out of their mouth is like the gospel direct from God. They honestly believe that. They believe once they say it, it's true. So how dare you contradict them? And it's something I've seen in other narcissists. And unfortunately, Donald Trump's doing it at a level where it's putting people in danger and causing people's deaths. And there's the problem. You can't bullshit your way through like you did when you were a little businessman flying under the radar. Now the world can see you and you look like a fucking fool. Well, he is orange Jesus to them. So, I mean, it's, yeah, absolutely. You know, it, it, you know I, I don't know, Mike. I mean, it's like you just want to reach out and, you know, like what old saying, reach out and touch someone. You know, you just want to, <laughs> it's like, wake up, snap out of it. Like Cher said, it's like, wake the fuck up. And I think yeah. you're right. I think, I think that it's getting to the point to where, I mean, I, I don't think a, peop, a lot of people were talking about COVID. I mean, a lot of his base died. Yeah, because of COVID, a lot of those older people died, and I know a few of them that you know. That I mean, my God, they get that pissed off about wearing a mask, and now they're getting mad about people still wearing a mask. Well, I don't want to sit the them; they're wearing a mask. I mean, goddamn! I mean, I, I mean, it's like if you can't wear a mask for your fellow human being, then you're. You, I mean, I don't know, man. Yeah, it's 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 really uh, a sickness that the base has. Uh, I think he's going to always have the base. People will say to me, well, oh, yeah. you can say this all day, but you'll never change their mind. I don't care. I know I'm not going to be able to change the minds of the base, but they're a small enough group where they don't matter in the election if normal-minded people finally see the fucking light. You know, they'll always go back to 2020 and they'll say, well, 71 million people voted for Donald Trump. That wasn't because they were all bought into Donald Trump. It was because they were diehard Republicans, daddy, granddaddy, great granddaddy, all voted Republican, and they were just going to vote Republican. Oh, Second, yeah. Secondly, Donald Trump as a candidate in 2020 is far different than Donald Trump as a candidate in 2024. A lot has been exposed. A lot of losses have gone by the wayside with Donald Trump. He's not the same candidate. He's not as strong as he was in 2020, and he still got beat in 2020. And, you know, the thing about him is that if he would have handled COVID different, he probably would have won in the election. No matter all the other bullshit that happened, if he if the one thing he could have handled was COVID and did what, you know, half the job Joe Biden did. I mean, he would have won. I mean, he, he I mean, he he would have been I mean, I wouldn't have liked it. But even all the other bullshit he did, you know, he, he couldn't do that. And that's the one thing that you need to worry about that when you're you have people dying that's the one you think you should worry about you shouldn't worry about how it makes you look and i if, think that's what biden has if if i'm an evangelical i would have to wonder <laughs> i don't <laughs> want I, I am a christian but I, I i'm not evangelical you have to wonder did god see the danger of donald trump and then put covid on the world just to expose donald trump and get his ass kicked out is that how god did it I don't know. Well, they maybe say it God was, works. Maybe. 
mysterious ways. So, you know, who knows? Maybe, maybe it was God's <laughs> will, especially when you look at the Trump effects and the vast majority of them were the deaths in, in COVID. It's, it's, you know, I'm tired of the evangelicals. And, and I think, you know, in this paradigm shift, I think the evangelicals, the radical right, the Christian nationals, they're going to take a lot of heat between now and the election. And after that, they are going to have a real problem coming back from that. They are going to lose a lot. And we may see the end of Donald Trump, the Republican Party, but even some of those radical Christian organizations. And I think when it, with speaking as an ex-evangelical, I think you may see a lot more people like me that, you know, knowing that they can they can elect somebody like Donald Trump. It totally kills your faith. I mean, the people that you used to look up to that, I mean, God, I mean, Clinton, I mean, they crucified him over a blowjob. Yeah, I know yeah. he lied. He shouldn't have lied, but I mean, it, it's just, you know, and, and believe me, I didn't get along with my dad, but the church we belong to just, you know, couldn't forgive him for being divorced, you know, and well, we come a long way, haven't we? Yeah. It's, it's amazing. You know, I've said this before, you look at all the transgressions that Donald Trump has gone through in seven or eight years. And then you think back to the uh, probably the 80s, I think it was, when Gary Hart was running for president. And the worst thing he did is have a bimbo sitting on his lap and get a picture taken. That pretty much shut down his fucking political career. But now the the, the Republicans are willing to forgive anything. And, you know, and I was talking about that on TikTok. I said the evangelicals, the Christian right, the radical right, um, they were willing to forgive anything Donald Trump wanted just as long as he did. The one thing they wanted to do is overturn Roe v. Wade. They were willing to sacrifice any concerns about sins or transgressions or whatever, just so they got what they wanted. Now they got what they wanted and guess what they did. They fucking destroyed the Republican party. So good luck with that motherfuckers. Yep. Could be a blessing in disguise. It can expose. It's like, you know what they say, like, you know, get the sunlight in to expose all the, you know, I don't know what it is, the old saying is, but get the expo- the sunlight, sunlight to expose. Sunlight is, the, sunlight is the best disinfectant. Yeah, and that's, that's what true. it is. Well, we're seeing a lot of sunlight now. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of sunlight now. And, and I think that uh, I got to tell you, because I'm old, I'm going to be 64 here in a couple of days, few days. And the one thing I've known and paid attention to all my life, every time there is a bad stretch, there's always some light at the end of the tunnel. We always come out of it. And guess what? Something a lot better comes along. We not only come through it, but it gets better. And I think that's where we're headed now. We've been damaged so long, abused. We're like abused family members. And once we get clear of it and we don't have that hanging over our heads, we're going to be compelled. Even the politicians are going to finally say, you know, fuck, maybe we should do something for the people. Maybe that's what it's going to take to keep us in office. I think I think that is probably going to happen. Well, to your lips, to God's ears, they say. But I think you're right, Mike. I, I'm, I'm behind you, man. I'll be 52 at the end of April. So we have the same birthday month. So, you know, and it's funny, you know, I'm 52 and I, I've seen a lot of stuff and I've, you know, you know, not probably as much as you have, but I've lived through a lot of this bullshit too. And I actually think it'd be the younger people that will save us because I don't see as much hate in them. They don't have hate for transgender people that are the gay thing. I mean, they grew up, you know, believing it. I think it's a lot of the older folks, my generation X included that are just, I mean, they dropped the ball. I mean, yeah, they had, you know, you got, you know, Clinton in there because my my generation pretty much voted for Clinton and got him in there and then we went back to Trump. I mean, I mean, I, I but this next generation they don't see anything good about the Republican Party and I think that's a good thing. And you look at the leadership on the horizon, Kamala, Gavin Newsom. I don't see anybody on the Republican side that you know I would even. I, I'll, I'll probably I'll never vote for another Republican in my life. Yeah, if we were making a sports comparison, they don't have a very deep bench. Because you've got the people that are tainted by Donald Trump. And after the November election, anybody touching Donald Trump will be pretty much uh, 
done in their business in terms of politics. So some other people are going to have to come up, but they're going to have to take some time to establish who they are and get people knowing how, who they are. That's why I'm saying if there's a blue wave in 2024, it may not be till 32 before the Republicans can put up a decent competitor in the presidential race. They're going to have to change their platform or actually have a platform because I don't see the the anti-abortion, anti-gay, lesbian, transgender I don't see that winning, not with the new generation. Oh, hell no. Oh, hell no. Well, uh, Jace, I tell you what, we are going to take a quick break and uh, we will be right back. We're back on the Rational Boomer podcast. Listener Jace from Texas is with us. It's always a pleasant conversation when Jace is with us. He has some interesting insights. And because he's from Texas, we should talk briefly about some of the bullshit going on down in Texas, particularly Ken Paxton. That is the dirtiest motherfucker in state politics that I can even imagine. But there's been some things going on. So why don't you bring us up to date with that? Yeah, Ken Paxton was under some. I I'm not. There's so much with them. It's kind of like Trump. You lose track. But he was under like some indictments or investigations for something that he made a deal with the uh, the prosecutors to where he paid a fine. And I don't even think he did community service. I'm not really quite sure about it. But it just seems like since the Senate, you know, didn't vote to convict him, he, you know, it seems like the state's kind of fallen off because. Right. He, uh, him and him and Abbott, they both primaried people this last uh, election to uh, go after. But Abbott's going after the people that you know voted against school vouchers, and Paxton, I think, went after the people that that were actually you know voting to convict him in the House. So I, they did pretty good too. I think they won seven out of eight or nine, something like that, that they primaried. Uh, our, my representative Tolan Gonzalez, it's, he, he kind of looks like Mike Johnson a little bit. Mm -hmm. He's been out there trying to like use the Trump talking points, but Trump didn't support him. He supported some guy named Brandon, something that's like a total MAGA guy. And he still does it. You know, they, they, they want to go after Biden, but he wants to use Trump so bad, but he can't use Trump. Right. And he uh, had a thing to where. He was talking about the border at the time and he goes, call Tony Gonzalez. And I called and I go, Hey, I was professional about it. I didn't, you know, I, I see some of those people like call and threaten people. It's like, well, they got your phone number, idiot. Yeah. You know, I said, you know, I think you need to, you need to vote on the, uh, and I don't know if he voted on that, that bipartisan thing or whatever. I didn't get to the house, I guess. So I guess he didn't, but I go, you need to support it. And you need to tell Trump, you know, tr you know, you don't support the Trump bill. You know, you need to stand up to Trump or whatever, which, you know, I'm talking to myself, of course. Of course. But he's out there running and I think he may lose. And I think, you know, everybody gets excited about Texas. I'm optimistic. I'm not. I'm You're not, not sold. I'm not sold. I think Colin Allred has the best chance of beating Ted Cruz. because I think Ted Cruz is just so hated and he and, uh, and Beto came so close to beating him. But what gets me about Texas is that you have all this stuff with the power grid. You have all this stuff with Tuvaldi and you had a good guy that one time said he wanted to defund the police and Beto and they, they still, you know, they, they totally ignore the January 6th part, you know, beating up the cops. But he said that and, and Abbott won overwhelmingly over Beto. Right. With you, Valdi, with, you know, people freezing to death. And it's like, I got to tell you, Mike, that kind of, you know, I'm optimistic about the country. I'm not optimistic about the state. Okay. And it's just, people don't really vote down here. And Beto, he had all these rallies and, you know, you could make Trump blush, but people don't show up. And they had the thing this last, this last uh, election. And they were talking about how voting went down. It wasn't the Republicans that, turned out that went down that's what's actually up it was the democrats they're the ones that didn't show up in the primaries i said something about, i said something that pissed off some some people and i want to see what you think as somebody who lives in texas i like beto 
I like Beto O'Rourke. I think he would have been a good governor, a good senator. I think yeah. he would have been done a great job. And I wish he would have beaten Ted Cruz and Abbott. I wish that would have happened, but he didn't. He lost two. Now, when you look in terms of a marketing aspect or just a political career, I personally think Beto needs to give it a rest for a couple of terms because he's lost two in a row and that's hanging over his head. Let a little time go by and then come back, maybe reinvent yourself to a point where maybe Texans will elect you to an office. But when I see Colin Allred come in, he's kind of a fresh face in this regard in the Senate. He's fundraising a lot of money. He knows how to say the right things. I'm not saying Colin Allred is a better politician than Beto, but after you've lost a couple of big races like that, that's kind of a a darkness that hangs over you. It's not necessarily right, but it's 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 like a politician who's going to run for the presidency and then loses. If they knew they were for sure going to lose, a lot of people will back out. That's why Bill Clinton got in back in the day. Uh, George George H. W. Uh, uh, Bush had this great following back then, and then the economy went to shit. But nobody wanted to run against him because they didn't want to win or didn't want to lose because they knew if it would they lost, it would taint them for future elections. So they backed out of it. You know, Bill Clinton had nothing to fucking lose, and he won the goddamn thing. W what do you think about Beto? What is the future of Beto? It doesn't sound like he's not involved in the 2024 election in any way, right? Well, he's still somewhat involved behind the scenes. I still get emails and voicemail and texts from him. Um, you know, not personally, of course. They're, they're fundraising. Right. Um, I think Beto would have been better off if he wouldn't have ran for governor. Yeah, I do too. Maybe on beating Ted Cruz. I think this time he could beat him. That um, would have been I a think, better move. Just yeah. wait for Ted and go after him again. I, I think he got a lot of pressure because the Democrats don't have anybody to run against Abbott. You should have seen that the lady that ran against Abbott before that, God bless her. She was a police chief and she got annihilated. I voted for her because I didn't like Abbott. But they, the Repub Democrats don't really have anybody and, and he's been one of the, I think he was pressured into it. I think I think Beto. I don't know if he'll ever run for office again because it, you know, it's got to be it's it's got to be you know just you know kills your soul, especially lose somebody like Ted Cruz. I get the Abbott thing because you know Abbott for some reason is popular down here, and but I think Beto would be better running the 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 DNC down here in Texas yeah, behind the yeah, scenes because he's really good at doing that. Maybe not in office, kind of like the girl in Georgia. You know, she's Stacy. What Stacy Abrams? She's lost Stacey a couple Abrams. races. Maybe yeah. she 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 works to do that. But I don't know. There's something about politicians that I've seen kind of with Beto and State. They, it's like they don't really want. They want an office. They don't really want to be behind the scenes. They they're right. they're more. Maybe it's something they don't they don't want to do. I mean, they don't want to do that. But I think Beto would be great behind the scenes. It's just if if that's something he wants to do, because Texas leadership down here, especially in Democrats, I mean, it. I think a lot of it has gone by the wayside because I don't think they reach out enough. I, I mean, I get I get stuff from Colin. I get stuff from Beto, but I don't. I get more stuff from like the the the. Uh, the national Democrat party. And I do the the Texas one. Cause I think a lot of people think Texas is a lost cause and I, they're going to continue to be that as long as I have that attitude. Well, let me, let me, let me ask you this. I think there's a wild card in the elections this year on the, in, in regards to the state. And that is the Roe v. Wade issue. We're seeing how the legislatures in Ohio and Arkansas and some other places want to ban abortions, but when it's on the ballot, they lose because the vast majority of people support Roe v. Wade. Do you think yeah. you're going to see a lot of young people in Texas realize this draconian approach to uh, abortion and they'll get scared and they'll say, fuck it, I'm going to vote for anybody that's not this guy that wants to ban abortion? How much of an impact do you think uh, the abortion issue will have in Texas? I'd like to say it don't have a lot, but I don't know because I haven't really seen Texas do like an Arizona, do like a Florida. Yeah. The girl, that lady that had the abortion, that was the, I think Jill, Jill Biden's uh, guest at state of the union. 
that she was a Republican, but she, I mean, I think, I think uh, Biden's running that commercial about there. I think, I think the national Democrat party is doing a lot more than the Texas Democrat party. I think Texans, it's a lot of, it's just, I mean, I try to be hopeful about it. And, you know, like I said, I'm more hopeful about the, the national. I don't know if that'll really be a thing in Texas because you have, I think a lot of people just think that, you know, the rich run the state. And when you see something happen to Paxton, I think it discourages a lot of people. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they're doing this. I mean, he's going, Paxton's going and he's, he was doing something to where he was, I guess, suing some church school or something like that because they were given transgender care or something like that. I mean, it's, Texas was like kind of the leader because a lot of this started in Texas. Didn't the Supreme Court that went over row, wasn't that started here in Texas? Was it? I think uh, it was. I, like I, I, I'm a man and I, and honestly, I don't probably pay attention as much as I should probably to that. But I mean, uh, but I mean, if you're a man and you're a woman and you're a man that cares about a woman, I mean, you should support a woman's right to choose. Right. But I just don't know. You have a lot of, you have a, I, there's a lot of people down here, Mike, that, that they just love they just love Trump. They love the MAGA and a lot of more women. And it's just like, like I said, I think it's a, it's an easier thing. And I think that if anything does happen and that, you know, Biden, when he does get reelected, it'll be, it'll, it, I think that's what Abbott's looking for as a future. He can, he can do a fight with Abbott or with Biden that where, you know, he can be that thorn in Biden's side, you know, and I think that's, that'll, you know, get Abbott in 2028. Look, I stood up to Biden, you know, and, you know, he beat Trump and all this stuff. I, I can see Biden, I, I have it doing that because I think that's what he does now. Cause you have a lot of people that are just dicks, you know what yeah. I mean? That are just, mm -hmm. you know, they're just, you know, just, just to be assholes about it. And I think, you know, and it, it gets, the, it gets the base riled up. And I think that's why Abbott continues to win because he's a thorn in Biden's side. Like he was in, he was, he tried to do that to Obama. There was some kind of conspiracy going on down here. I forget what it was when Obama was president, they had all these troops at the border and all this stuff. I mean, this is the same old thing they did before, but sadly the people down here keep, keep falling for it. I mean, maybe the young people do it, but I didn't see him show up at the primary. I mean, if anything, Democrat turnout was down. Right. Well, let me ask you this. One of the things that's happening in the states that have the abortion bans is they're seeing kind of an exile of younger people and doctors and people in the medical yeah. profession. I mean, it's untenable if you're a doctor or in the medical profession because you're putting yourself at risk every day and some woman comes and needs help for her very life and you can't do it because some politician says you can't. If I'm a doctor, I'm getting the fuck out of Dodge. And when all the doctors get the fuck out of Dodge, do they finally sit up and take notice and go, shit? Or does Texas just say, well, whatever, you've got a shortage of doctors now? Well, there's a mentality down here in Texas, and I think the power grid going out a couple years ago kind of proved that wrong, that they think they can be their own country. I mean, there, there's a, there's, they, I see these seed things all the time, like seed from, you know, and I mean, it's funny, you only see that when a Democrat's in charge, you know, right? you know, you don't see that when Trump was there or Bush, but it's just, it's, it, I think what they're doing is, and you know, I think down here, I think a lot of the numbskulls out outmaneuver when I say I'm a blue dot and a red thing. I mean, there's a reason why I do that. I mean, Texas used to be so blue with Ann Richards and all that stuff that Lyndon it's, Johnson. Yeah. Yeah. Lyndon Johnson. Yeah. And it's just like, I mean, and I've been, you know, I've been voting. I mean, I, I've been voting since I, I mean, I had a really good history or a government teacher in high school that got me registered to vote, you know, you know, before I, cause I, I turned 18 right before I graduated and, you know, I've always voted, but there's a lot of Republicans down here. They always vote, too. And I think what's happening down here is like I don't think the, the Democrats have the outreach because I think they're defeated. I mean, it's going to take somebody like a Beto more. More people like Beto. Let's say that they yeah. go out there and volunteer and stuff like that, because, you know, I, I see that in other states and I see somebody like maybe. I don't know. I see somebody like maybe Ohio or Alabama, you know, going blue before Texas. Really? Maybe, I mean, maybe not Alabama, maybe Florida, because I see that, that they're all, but I don't see anything down here to where, I mean, I, I don't get any, I don't get any, and I'm on all these, I mean, I subscribe to all these things. I've donated to the Democratic Party, but like I said, it's more of the, 
maybe it's on the federal to get the states more involved. But, you know, I just don't see Texas. Like I said, I think Colin Allred will win, but I think your John Cornyns will still be around. I think your Greg Abbott's will still be around. I hope Ted Cruz is gone, but if he Ted Cruz wins again, it won't surprise me. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I just, I hate to be that way because I'm, I'm trying to be pretty damn positive, you know, because, but I, that's just the way I see it. And living down here, I mean, I, I thought when Beto came that close to beating Cruz, I thought we were close, but with the Abbott thing and then with this last primary, I mean, Democrats need to get off their ass and do something. They're going to lose Texas forever. And I, I just think the the younger people may just don't care. Well, I, I suggested one time, if you really want to secede from the union, let's just <laughs> test it out. Go ahead, secede for six months or a year, and then come back to us. And when you do, there's going to be some fucking changes. Uh, now, now, when all this happened in Arizona with this draconian law from 1864 about banning abortion, <laughs> did it make you feel good because Arizona made Texas look better? I don't know. I read some of the stuff that they were, I, I was listening to some of the laws that were like enacted back then when that happened. And I think one of them was that doctors just started realizing they needed to wash their hands before surgery. <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's like anything in history. It's like, you have to kill a, you have to, you know, where well, they used to give the, the, the fruit when they used to come over to an animal, to let's see if it died or not. And they could eat it like an apple or something. You had to, you know, you, what's that thing you had to, you know, I don't know what the old saying is, but you, I mean, it's like, it was so that word draconing has been used a lot lately, but when you have grandmas freezing to death and we still get these notices about our power grid going out, I don't know, Mike. I mean, Texas may be the last of the bunch, man. I mean, yeah. you know, it's like, you know, yeah, I get what they're doing, but I I, I don't know, man. I, I'd still put Texas at the bottom. I hate to say that about my own state, but I mean, we still think the Cowboys are going to win the Super Bowl, and we were really a bunch of dumbasses down here. Yeah, there you go. Well, you know, talking about Arizona briefly, then we're going to get to Trump and his trial. But talking about Arizona, I have to wonder with them coming out with the Supreme Court decision for this ridiculous law and the pushback they've got, not only from Democrats, but from Republicans. You have to wonder if that one instance hasn't lost Arizona for the Republicans. I got to I mean, think so. I mean, Donald, Tr Donald Trump has said, well, you know, his only answer is, well, I want to send it back to the states. Well, you did that and you fucked up. And then you said you oh, were yeah. against it. Um, how, how does any how does anybody that's young and, and, and supports Roe v. Wade vote for any Republican? I don't know, man, but he was over there. He was over there on his, his true social saying that before I was sending it back to the states. Now he's saying, well, the Supreme Court in Arizona made a mistake. Well, which one is it? Yeah, which one is it? I mean, if you have a mother, if you care about a woman, you, I mean, it's it's like you said, you know, women don't forget nothing. You know, that's no. why they say that they're always the best judges in the NFL because they don't, they, they, they see everything. Yeah, they do. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, it's like, yeah, I don't get how this is a winning strategy. And I would like to think it, I mean, I think Florida may be in play, yeah, especially with them putting on the ballot. You know, who knows? Maybe it'll, it'll, it'll go over to Texas, but you know, it's, we got to start getting people, people that give a goddamn about us, you know, elected. And when they get elected, we need to hold their feet to the fire to make sure the Democrats don't become as corrupt as the Republicans are right now. The thing that truly amazed me about the double down and the triple down thing with the Republicans in Arizona, which convinced me that they are absolute idiots. Supreme yeah. Court comes out with this decision. Everybody hates it. Republicans and the Democrats. The Republicans hate it because it know it sinks their chances in the election in 2024. So somebody takes it to the Arizona legislature and says, let's repeal this law. Here's a perfect opportunity to back out of it. But what happens? Republicans block it and they keep the law. The one chance to save themselves with only a little bit of damage, they decide to sink themselves completely by holding on to this dumb fuck decision. And Carrie Lake, all of a sudden, she's pulling a, uh, she's, what did she pull a, I was for it before I was, who was that did that? I was for it before I was against it. Yeah. Who, who said it was Obama? They gave Obama a bunch of crap for that. I voted for it before I was against it. And it's like, I mean, it's like, I think they're going to pick up a Senate seat. And I think what's going to happen is I, I'm very confident the House is going to go to the Republican, the Democrats. 
the Senate, I wasn't too sure about because you was with uh, that Munchkin guy going away from West Virginia, and then, well, I well of course with Arizona going away, I mean, and with Colin Allwright picks it up, that's going to help out. Yeah, you don't possibly um, you're not suggesting that Kerry Lake's going to beat Gallegos, are you? No, no, no not at there's all. There's no way that's no, no. Happen. I'm saying, well, who was it? Cinema when she was leaving, I was kind of worried about it. But that's like the worst thing that can happen to them now is this Arizona law is that, like I said, I, I was really confident with the House going. But I think the Senate's looking up there now, too. And I think this and I read something that they're saying the senators are kind of the Republican senators are kind of pissed off because they're seeing all this shit going on in the House. Along with this abortion thing, that may sink them. Right. No, I, I've said all along, I think the Democrats will win the House and the Senate. And I know a lot of people disagree with me. But you see, Kentucky I, passed that they overrid the uh, bill for that governor. Oh, did they? They, he appoint, he, they, uh, they had the supermajority in Kentucky and he vetoed that bill. Like if something happens to McConnell, they don't replace him. They overrid his veto. Right. So but, but they may you, be looking, they may be because McConnell's got a few years left. They may be thinking too, shit. They I mean, if something happens to Mitch, you know, we're going to need that seat. So, you You're know, you're going to need the seat. But you know what Bashir said? Uh, Andy Bashir is the governor of Kentucky. And he said, if they override my veto, he said, when if it happens, I'm just going to appoint anybody I want to appoint, let them fucking sue me, which was, which is a typical Republican fucking play. And that's what he says he's going to do. He thinks oh, it's yeah. unconstitutional. Let's take it to court and find out. But until then, I'm appointing this motherfucker. Yeah, maybe they know something about Mitch that, you know, Moscow, and it's funny how, what's his name called, uh, 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 Marjorie Tether Green, Moscow March, <laughs> like they used to call Mitch, uh, uh, Moscow Mitch. So, I mean, if anything in it, man, I mean, it's, I mean, maybe Mitch is not, you know, I don't know, man. He, he hadn't, they haven't shown, I mean, I, I, I believe he's probably still had some episodes, but they're not showing as much. So there might, Mitch may not be long for this world. Well, you know, you know, it's funny. You don't see much of Mitch these days, no. but as of late, Donald Trump looks worse than Mitch as far he as looks physical. Horrible. He looks absolutely horrible. Did you see that? Somebody sent me the videotape of Lawrence O'Donnell did a little, uh, a little monologue on Donald Trump and how, and it was all about ripping into his looks. And he says, you look at his face, he's going to sit there silently and you're going to see that weird brown tint on his face and you're going to know it's a lie because those little fucking pink ears. And, you know, it's just hilarious. If you get to see that video, you got to watch it. It's absolutely hilarious. But um, Marjorie Taylor Greene, I think she's going to get reelected because of the dumb fucks in her district. But I tell you what, she won't be long for the house because once the Democrats win the house, she's going to do some fucked up shit and they're going to send her ass packing. Well, I think that there's trouble in paradise with Trump because Trump may flip flop, but that, but she doesn't flip flop. Mm -mm. This may, the, her standing behind, if she does, I guess it kind of depends on what, how Trump feels that day. Um, he, he flips flops, but if he, she does do that to get rid of Mike Johnson, that's going to piss daddy off because did you, did you, you saw that press conference, right? Did you see that stuff while he walked in front of Trump and Trump told him to get behind him? Yeah, I saw, I saw some of that. I saw some of it. I didn't watch the whole thing because and, and, uh, I don't fucking Midas, care. Midas touch had a thing to where he was talking. He said, he said something about criminals and he pointed Trump. I don't think it was inadvertently, but <laughs> it was like, yeah, he did it. But my God, I mean, it's like all my life, I was always told about, you know, this is growing up evangelical, you know, you respect people, you don't cut them down, you turn the other cheek, you don't lie, you know, you be a godly person. If anybody gets divorced, that's worse than murder. I've had people literally tell me that, but Trump gets a pass on that stuff. I mean, it's, it's all about the abortion thing, like you said, Mike, and it's just, if anything Trump has done, he's exposed the... He's exposed the Republicans years ago and they lost people like me. Now he's exposing the evangelicals. Well, well I'd like to, if I ever met Trump, I'd walk up to him, hold my nose and go, sir, I'd like to thank you for something. Cause you opened my eyes up. I used to be a Republican and now I'm a damn liberal and I want to thank you for it. And he'd probably <laughs> take, okay, that's good. Thank you very much. He'd probably accept it. He's so stupid. Oh, he would. He would. I, I will tell you this. When you talk about, uh, uh, divorces, Worse than murder. I've had people tell me that. Well, well, to, to, for me, 
it's the best option to murder because I wouldn't get divorced. I'd be killed in my sleep. So <laughs> I'm better off just playing it cool, you know, doing what yeah. I'm told and everybody's safe. It, it's, it's, you know, we, we, you know, we're getting down to the last half of the second half. And I wanted to talk about what's happening tomorrow. And, and I think it's paramount to Donald Trump's future and the end the demise of Donald Trump. We, you know, he's got this gag order. And of course, leading up to today, he's violated that gag order a few times and nothing has yet been done to them. Mm -hmm. I have to, and, and I know some people said, well, if they did it, it cost too much money. Fuck the money. We wasted a lot of money on stupider things or that it, it, it it's logistically hard or whatever. Look, if you're not going to do anything about it, don't issue a gag order. Don't, don't don't make a demand that you're not going to back up. And I don't know if this guy is not backing it up. But but the thing about it is, is Donald Trump's got another problem. He's going to be in court every day, four days a week, eight to 10 hours every day. And he's going to he's going to have to behave. He won't. It'll be interesting to see what the judge does in that situation, because that's a much different situation. He's now going to be tainting the jury and making the case, the trial, a fucking circus. And this has got to piss off Judge Marchand. I, I got to think, Mike, that the judge is being pretty lenient until the trial starts. When the trial starts, I think, I I would hope that it, you know, he starts doing that. He went after Michael Cohen today. He can't go after witnesses. And he's doing that. He's chaining the jury. But I got news for you. New York hates Trump so much. I don't think he no, can't. I don't, I don't think can taint the jury he but i did see him. what he's doing now is that he went to canon in florida and is saying well i'm going to yeah. be you know you got to postpone this because i'm going to be with this other one right that's fine do it do it that way do it do it that way and you know what and i don't want to see it when he tries to push all this stuff loses the election badly and then we hear from the republicans well you know for the better of the country let's part no no. no, you know, it's like that shit. It's like it's the stuff with Hunter Biden right now. You don't think Joe wants to go there and pardon his son? If that was Don Jr., well, I don't know if that was Don Jr. I would have let him rot anyway. But if that would have been one of Trump's buddies, he would have pardoned him. But you don't see no. Biden doing that. No. Even though I think that that law they have with Hunter, it, it, they, they said it was unconstitutional, but they're still holding him to it. Right. You know, right. And all there, you know, it's like you talk about somebody being railroaded and somebody being persecuted. Do yeah. I like what he did? No. But I mean, it, I mean, it's like they're making more. Hunter Biden has gone through more shit than Donald Trump has. But I think that's about to change. I, I, think, I think I think so. I, I, see, your, I see your TikToks and I, and I check them is because at work I go to lunch and then I I close the door because, you know, the colorful language. Which Could I swear. <laughs> yeah, we both share and I listen to it. And um, I always try to take my lunch about, you know, a little bit later because I can watch what you say. But I, I comment on your your stuff a lot. And I put, you know, a little soda, a little popcorn. It's like, shit, it's going to get, I mean, I, 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 I'm I almost giddy. I am too. Because I'm excited about this because I think the guy, and it's, you know, people tell me I have Trump derangement syndrome. You know what I mean? Okay, I do. But, you know, I have heard all this shit about, you know, Joe Biden all these years and, I even had one of my coworkers, big Republican. I just wish I'd get him on something. I mean, they don't care. That's yeah. how I feel about Trump. Get him on something. Right. He broke the law. It's a hush money thing, but it's like, get your popcorn ready. Watch this shit. Because you know what? I think, I think it's like, it's somebody was saying that, you know, that that's the reason why, like with OJ, when he got off, it wasn't about them believing he was innocent or guilty. It was just that a black man got away with what the, rich white man always has. Yeah. So I guess in a way we're seeing Trump happening to Trump is what would happen to me or you. Right. Our ass would have been crucified. And I think that's what's about to happen to Trump. Will he go to jail? I don't know, but he'll be a felon. And you know, that'll have a lot more. And they used to think that it'll be a badge of courage. I don't it's think not. it is. I think it's going to hurt him even worse. And I, and I don't think the Republicans know what they're in for this November. Well, you know, when he gets his convictions, and make no mistake, here's going to be convictions. He's got 34 oh, yeah. charges. Uh, Alan Bragg has a 98% conviction rate. If Alan Bragg has a really bad day, 
and only gets 50%, that's 17 fucking charges and convictions. That's going to be devastating to Donald Trump. And why, here's the funniest thing. While this court case is going on, one week into the court case, Donald Trump's locked into his little seat at the defense table in this trial. A week from Monday, they have a hearing to figure out whether this Bond guy, this hanky guy, is legit. And the fact is, he's not legit. So when they determine he's not legit, then you got to think Letitia James going to start seizing and uh, and liquidating shit, and Donald Trump's locked in a court case. That's going to be hilarious. He's going to literally and figuratively lose his shit. You know, honestly, Mike, you know, you, you always say that, that he just puts off the ine in inevitable, okay, easy word to say. I mean, it's like, have you ever like lost something and it's like, or gone through something and you're just, you're just like, okay, you know, and you just like with this, I mean, he just prolonged the suffering he did with his bond yeah. stuff. Let her have it. Let her buy some properties, get that off your thing, move on, focus on something else. But he can't do that. He can't, he can't lose. I mean, you got to be able to lose and, but the, but they don't, people don't want to lose. So that's why it's a rigged election or, you know, that's why crooked Joe by, I mean, it's like you, you, there's no losing anymore with him. God. Okay. You're going to take my property. And if I'm as rich as I say I am, which I don't think he is no. take the property. That's one thing off my plate. I can move on. You know, people declare bankruptcy all the time to put that behind them and move on. He's done that. I mean, he's never lost anything, but, like you, I, I love your little saying, nut cutting time. I mean, I, I crack up every time I hear that. It's like, boy, it's nut cutting time, all right? And it ain't going to be no nuts left, man. <laughs> no, 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 no. Just one little mushroom. It's going anyway. to it's gonna, it's gonna be interesting, man. I mean, it's it's he's getting, after almost 80 years of getting what he wants, and I think that's why he's going to freak out so much. I mean, I am. I just can't imagine what he pulls. But I, I kind of I, I kind of disagree with you on the him acting like I get what you're saying, but we all saw Harvey Weinstein on the walker. I mean, it's like, you know, and if Trump does have to get on a walker, I hope they show that shit. You well, know what well, I mean? Because they feel like Don Jr. having to carry him one time. Yeah, I hope they show that shit. Here's the thing. Yeah, I know what you're talking about with Harvey Weinstein and he looked pathetic and all that stuff. Now, I'm just saying that Donald Trump will not fake an illness. I'm not saying he won't get ill or have a stroke or a heart attack or something, something he can't control. And Donald Trump's a control freak. That could happen. And when you put that amount of pressure on a 77, 78-year-old man who's not healthy in the first place, something physical or mental could, could break. I'm just saying he's not going to do it to try to fake it because it goes against everything he 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 wants his appearance to be. I, I didn't believe Harvey Weinstein for a second. So I didn't just you really? like, no, I didn't believe that for a second. No, no, I believe he was guilty. I didn't believe the illness he was faking. I when he was in the walker and stuff, I didn't believe that at all. I thought he was trying to get sympathy. And I just that, that could be a, I think he's a little different personality than Donald Trump. I think he probably is a narcissist, but I also think he's desperate. And Harvey Weinstein's not as dumb as Donald Trump. True. See, Donald but, Trump, Donald, Donald Trump thinks he can he puts things off because he thinks ultimately he'll figure it out and talk his way out of it because he's always been able to do that. I think Harvey Weinstein was resigned to the fact I'm fucking caught. There's nothing I can do. So I'll do whatever I have to do to save my soul. Donald Trump doesn't have that intellect. It's yeah, just look at, I'm a hero. Remember when I saw him come out with that walker and I'm like, I think Trump would do something like that. But I get your point, too, that. Can you imagine how God, if, you know, but it, it's just something about, I, I did, a, I did a mistake. I made a mistake. I was on a, I was watching on Facebook and I went into the comments section, not on a, a meme, a meme group or whatever, you know, funny meme group. And yeah. I saw, and I saw the Trumpers and you know, one guy, they were talking about when he did his mug shot. And as they weren't saying, oh, this is the end for me or nothing, they were saying he had to do this to infiltrate the pedophiles and the and the left. He had to become a criminal like them. And I'm thinking this has got to be a joke. I mean, you should see the I mean, I was like, you know, I, I may have been a little slow and I was born at night, but it fucking wasn't last night. 
Yeah. And I was like, these, there's people that, you know, that, you know, when he got his, his, his mug shot, that's why he was given that stern look. Like he's such a badass. Oh, whatever. <laughs> and it's like, these people have this, I mean, it's, I think these people think more of Trump than he may actually think of himself that he's yeah. going to infiltrate the Illuminati. And I mean, these people are, I mean, I mean, they need mental evaluations and when we went when the democrats win and stuff like that i hope that biden helps restore all those mental things they get and get these people some help because it's like i mean it, it they just i mean what they believe is just i mean they're it's it's to me it's a mental illness a lot of it it's got to be it's just well I don't know. The, the thing about it is people like this the cult members for donald trump they've always been there yeah. they will always be here they True. just they just felt confident that they could come out because one of their own was at the mountaintop. I think what will happen is we're not going to change anybody's minds because dumb is dumb, racist is racist. The only thing that will happen is what happened prior to Donald Trump, where these people will slither back under their rocks and we won't hear from them because they're afraid of being taken to task. You're right. We we have we have a certain percentage of people in this country, bigger percentage than I thought, that are just dumb and hateful and racist and misogynistic and anti-Semitic and anti-country. They just exist. They've always existed. It wasn't until Donald Trump came out that they got a little power. And I think what the Republicans are also what they're not they're not paying attention to. They talk about the red wave is you have people like me that used to be grew up a Republican that grew up, you know, pretty much spoon fed a lot of the bullshit that I was listening to and stuff. You know, I listen to the Rush Limbaugh's. I listen to that stuff. But as I get older, I've become more, you know, I got away from that negative influence and I got a, I, I wasn't sheltered, so to speak. And I think there's a lot of people like me that are, you know, like Nicole Wallace, you know, Rick Wilson that, that used to be. And the, I think the one thing different between like me and like a lot of them is that they still they didn't become Democrats like me. I mean, I, I'm, I support Democrats now because it's, you know, a lot of people say oh, I'm not a Democrat. I'm a whatever. I, I consider myself a Democrat. That's the party I support now. Right. If they start changing. I'll never do like I did before. I, I will always vote for the candidate. And that's one thing I've learned and not the not the party. Right. I, and right. I and. And I think they have lost a lot of people like me and they're never going to get them back because we saw that they embraced Trump and Trump was everything we were told that we didn't support. And that is what I will never be able to vote for another Republican. You know, I don't, you know, I, I just, it was all a lie. It, you know, it, it was all a lie. It was all about power and it, they proved that every day it's all power. Well, the, the one, the one thing I will say about that is that, uh, you said you were a Republican and now you're not a Republican. Well, the fact is you can't be a Republican now because the Republican no. Party does not exist as we knew it. This this is not the Republican Party. These are not conservatives. This is a totally different fucking uh, cult. It's, it's a cult. It's a total, totally different thing from the Republican Party. It, in, in my mind, the Republican Party doesn't exist. You had no choice but to leave the Republican Party because the Republican Party fucking ended when Donald Trump took over. It's now, like you said, the TNC, the Trump National Committee. Um, so so that's what that's what the Republicans have to look at when they yep. get their ass kicked in 2024. They have to decide, can we go back to where we were or do we trend? uh uh, <laughs> this would be great. Do we transform into to another formation of what we call the Republican Party? Then we could call it the Trans Republican Party. That would be fucking beautiful. Oh yeah, they would love to wear those shirts. Yeah, yeah. And the thing about it is, is that you know, you know, they they you know, there's people oh, we're going to work within the Republican Party. The Republican Party is so far gone. Yeah. That I've also become a lot different than I was before. I was a lot more selfish when I was growing up. I uh, lost my brother a few years ago. And when he was a little bit younger than me, I was like about, I think I was, he's about 13 years younger than me. He died unexpectedly. And it made me just, you know, change a lot the way I was kind of headed there already. 
But there's a saying that I always get to, and it's Muhammad Ali said, if you're the same person at 50 that you are at 30, you haven't learned anything. And I think that's what's wrong with a lot of conservatives and a lot of people that I used to, they haven't changed. They haven't, right. in a lack of a better word, progressed. Right. They're, they're still who they were at 20, and I'm not because I'm not the brash. I mean, a lot of people would disagree, but... <laughs> You know, I, I was a lot more conceited back then. I, 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 I'm 52 now, and I look more about most of my life's behind me. I hate, right. You know, that's 104. But I, I want to enjoy my life, and I want to help somebody out. I don't want to necessarily get all I can take and screw the other guy. It was all about competition before. And I think that, you know, I look at somebody like Joe Biden, you know, and I look at somebody like Obama that, you know, have dedicated their life to, you know, helping others, you know, especially what the Obamas are doing now. I see more of that now than I did when I wanted to be a Rush Limbaugh, when I wanted to make all that money. You know, I never did. But, you know, I can't help people out, though. And I think that, you know, I'm much happier where I'm at now than I was when I was 20, 30 years well, old. Well, you know, you know, people people have said to me, how can you keep doing this on TikTok and on the podcast? I said, well, that's kind of my nature anyway. I, I talk a lot yeah. and I express my opinion. I tend to be bold and all that stuff. I said, but let's look at this. I'm 64 years old. If I'm lucky, if I'm really lucky, I got 20 years. OK, I got 20 years now. People take the last 20 years of their life. They sit on a fucking couch, walk with a walker and do nothing. I'm not that kind of guy. I'm going to go out with a blaze of fucking glory. And people say, aren't you afraid of dying? No, I'm not afraid of dying. And you know why? Because hundreds of millions of people died before me. How hard can it fucking be? Plus, you were dead before you were born. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah, I, I appreciate you, Mike, because I think you when I was really fucking worried about that red wave because I was listening to that stuff and I came across you on TikTok. Thank goodness I did. And I've been a fan ever since I've listened to it. And you just, you just, you just looked at me, calm the fuck down, Nancy. I was like, okay. You know, I mean, you have that, you have that kind of uh, thing to where you, you, you remind me of an old like Southern Baptist, not the bad part preacher that, you know, the, you know, you know, goddamn, we're going to be fine. You know, I, I mean, I, I don't no, know. I know, Maybe I know what you're saying. You, you have that, that thing to where it's like, you know, you could have like the, the Joel Olstein, you know, everything's going to be fine. Yeah. No motherfucker, get your head out of your ass. It's going to be fine. And it's like old soul said, yeah. you know, it's like, well, I'm not going to run away from the country if something bad happens, you know? And it's like, you know, it's like, you know, people like you and her, you know, Ed, you know, you have Eric. I mean, it's like, you know, it's a good community that, you know, we have. Yeah, absolutely. But you're providing a service you know, you're not sitting there telling people that, you know, I mean, you're, you're doing a service. You pretty much deconstructed me from all the years I listened to Rush Limbaugh. <laughs> so you have taken and deconstructed me from that. I won't say ill by the dead or whatever, but no, I mean, it, it, somebody it, like Rush, it, Rush you know Limbaugh. I'm saying. It, We're glad he's it, dead. It is, you you kind of got that, you know, you kind of got that Rush Limbaugh thing where, I mean, that's what's, what was funny about Rush Limbaugh at the beginning is because he made fun of people. And had that kind of your, you know, your, your sense of humor or whatever. And it's like, and I knew it was gone when he sold out to Trump. I was like, you know, you 20 fucking years ago, never would have stood for that. And that's no, why I knew it was all my, no. and that's why I like about you is that you're, you piss people off, you know, and it's like, you know, if you get people pissed off, you know, you got to get their fucking attention and you get their fucking attention and I mean, I, I believe you have a lot more fans than you do haters and you know, oh, like that, you know, yeah, you know, I think that's so true. You've got a bigger it's... following than you do people that don't like you. And the only people that don't like you are the ones that aren't, you know, have an open mind. They're too set in right. their fucking ways. You, you know, I think, I think one of the things that makes me a little different than most people, and it doesn't make me better. It just makes me weird. Every day I talk to people in DMs and shit like that. And there's one common thread with people that there's a lot of fear. There's a lot of fear. And it's not that I'm brave, but I have no fucking fear. I'm not afraid of the Republicans. I'm not afraid of what's going to happen in 2024 because I know that, that whatever happens, I'm going to survive. 
Yeah. I'm 64 years old. I've gone through all the trials, tribulations, and tragedies, and still here I am. There have been times when I was young, I thought, oh, this is the end. I'll never make it through this, but yet here I am. And I think all of us are in that situation, but we get sucked in by that fear, and we let that fear control us. If people can learn one thing, Emotions are to be controlled, not to control you. And when emotions control you, that's when you're fucked. You know, yeah. it's not that I'm never afraid. I'll be afraid of certain things. But day to day, I'm not afraid of what will happen when Trump gets to be president, because I know looking at the facts, there's no way he can be. So I'm not going to be afraid. I'm going to be confident. And confidence is the key to anyone's success. And if you can figure out a way to be confident, you're going to do all right. Well, I think that, I mean, I thank you for it. I thank you for the service you're doing. You may, you, you know, you, you started that TikTok little thing with, and that whole TikTok band's kind of died out, hadn't it? I guess Joe Schumer just put it on his desk like, Mitch, yeah. they're not going to touch that shit before no. the election. Ain't no fucking way. No. And, and that's what uh, I said. That's what, you know, they said, well, what's going to happen if TikTok get I got to ban it? 170 million people use it. That would be fucking political suicide. You got to think that somebody's in Biden and, and Schumer's ear. Yeah, the Republicans want to do it, but they're fucking communists anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're not going to take their talk away. And you know, and I appreciate you, Mike, and everything you do. I look forward to your show every day. I started out listening to it on the way to work, but with all the bullshit going on, I started listening to it on the way home because it seems like it's just so it's just so much shit going on right now that I've actually picked up a couple more podcasts. But I always make sure I listen to yours last because you're the one that puts it all in perspective for me, man. And I appreciate it. And I appreciate I think you have a good thing having your guests come on and your listeners come on. I think that nobody else is doing that. And I think that's why you continue to grow. Yeah, no. It, and actually, I'm watching the the podcast grow pretty quickly. I mean, awesome. as of the last couple of months. Uh, and I wanted to say something that hasn't hit it yet. Um, <laughs> this is a, a milestone but not really as big a milestone as maybe other people might do it. But uh, as far as total downloads on the Rational Boomer podcast, as of this morning, I am at 999,000 downloads. Wow. So I'm short of a million downloads. Now that sounds like a lot, but remember, I do this motherfucker every day. So it's not like I got a million downloads doing it twice a week, but still it's well, about what a hundred, a hundred dollars per download is what you get. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I haven't been able to get a hold of George Soros lately. He's been, oh, kind yeah. of ducking, he's been yeah. ducking my call. So yeah, uh, my when check I hasn't him. come in lately since I'm a, you know, I'm down here in Texas working on it. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I tell but, you what, if Colin all right gets elected, man, he, th he needs to throw us a party. Uh, yeah, Mike. no shit. Somebody <laughs> does. Somebody fucking does. We'll get the whole group of uh, of oh, yeah. rational boomer folks and we'll have one hell of a party. I, I think that, uh, you know, the one thing I want to say to folks is I did the TikTok. TikTok's a nice thing. I love doing it. it went way bigger than I thought. But the whole reason I did the TikTok was to be able to do this. This was yeah. the end game to do the podcast because I feel more comfortable doing it. It's more what I've done in my life. The TikTok's a much different deal. Uh, but now, of course, I got to keep up the TikTok because I got a bunch of people counting on me on TikTok and I have a responsibility to that. But the reason for the TikTok was to do this. So I'm very grateful that TikTok put me in a position where people found out who I was and uh, were crazy enough to want to listen to the podcast. And I'm, I'm appreciative of it every day because this is what I really want to do. Uh, the TikToks are just a, um, what do they call that? A means to an end. Well, you have a lot of people uh, duetting your, yeah. duetting your, uh, I've noticed that too. It's like, Hey, that's my buddy, Mike. And you know, I'll see something come up. I don't follow. I'm like, Hey, I know that guy. So uh, you're getting the word out there. And you know, if anybody wants to like, you know, cut you down or disparage you they can't argue with what you're fucking saying you know you know they can make fun of everything but what you're saying is i mean yeah. i mean of course you know it, it 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 resonates with a lot of people obviously and you're seeing it every week and every day well you know th there's a lot of people that come on and disparage me make fun of me say different shit they're trample fucks I, I, don't, I don't really care my wife will see them and she'll go Oh, I couldn't do that. I go, why not? Because they're making fun. Who fucking cares? And she says, are you going to go after them? I go, no, I don't have to. She goes, what do you nope. mean? When you got 326,000 followers, somebody says some shit on, on you on, on one of those comments, <laughs> fucking people go after that bastard. They don't know what hit them. And if I see it, I block them. So they're done anyway. 
Yeah, I, I've been on there and, you know, you just say something kind of like I've done it with you. I've done it with, you know, Hawk. I've said something, nothing, nothing about them. And you have people attack you. And it's like if you can't, I mean, you can't be a creator without, you know, and create. I'm not even a creator, but you you can't go through this life without thick skin. You know, yeah, and you, you can yeah. see about like Trump. Every time somebody cuts him down, it's like he's got to respond. But there was one thing, and I know we've been on a while, but the one thing that I've noticed about the one person I've never seen Trump, even when he was president, speak back to, that was Greg Popovich for the Spurs. He would say shit about that guy. And he never said anything back? He never, I've never, and of course, all my, I don't like Pop now. It's like, yeah, you don't like Pop because he's cutting down your orange Jesus. (laughs) But I never saw Pop, I never saw him go against, I never saw him go against Pop. Wow. And I'm like, you know, and I love Greg Popovich. I, he just, you know, he's the kind of guy, he's like you and me, we're blunt. Yeah. And it's like, I, I just, and what he was saying was right. And it's like, I never, and it's like you said, when you confront a bully, they back down, you yeah. know, he goes after women a lot or something, their appearances. I mean, he called Stormy Daniels, you know, horse face. I tell you what, Stormy Daniels was, has been better looking than that guy on his best day. Yeah. I mean, something, you know, she, you know, so it's Stormy it's Daniels. You got to stand up to. So Stormy Daniels had a great quote. Donald Trump was talking shit about Stormy Daniels, which he shouldn't have been doing with the gag order. But he said that Stormy Daniels will sell virtually anything to yes. make money. And then she so, says, no, I would never sell Bibles. <laughs> Even the porn star has her limits. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. The porn... something, man. That's the that's the one thing that that's probably the one thing that's really going to bring him down before the election. I mean, it's 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 you couldn't write you couldn't write anything better. Well, over and above the convictions, the embarrassment he's going to suffer, and the embarrassment Melania is going to suffer because while it's not about Stormy Daniels or McDougal, uh, that information is going to come out. It's going to come out that he paid for sex and then he paid them to shut up. And he, you know, it's one thing if you heard it the last seven years, all the Democrat or all the Republicans can say, oh, that's just a hoax on CNN. This is coming right from a court, right from evidence, right from a witness, and they can't possibly spin it or deny it. And this is what, and, and if you want to hurt a, uh, if you want to hurt a uh, uh, narcissist, embarrass them. That's worse than taking his money or putting him in jail. Embarrass that motherfucker and expose him for who he is. That is going to absolutely kill him. And that's why he's really upset about this trial. Yeah. And then you have the the people coming out of the woodwork like Michael Avenatti that, you know, I don't know why MSNBC, especially oh, Ari. Had there. But he was, boy, you talk about angling for a pardon, you know, oh, Trump can't get a fair trial or, you know, and they were having an affair. I mean, I don't know if he said he was the one that said they had the affair, but he ripped off all that money from her. And of course, Trump gets out there. Oh, yeah. You know, sitting there cut, uh, in the out. It's like, well, and I put I think I put it on your uh, TikTok thing when you were talking about it or somebody. And I go, yep, just one crook supporting another. Uh, absolutely. Michael Avenatti. I knew there was something fishy about him. Everybody loved him because he was fighting Donald Trump. And then he goes to jail for 19 years. Somebody said, how you when he was on when he was on MSNBC, the how you doing? Well, I remember a song by Elton John, I'm Still Standing, and I'm going to come out better for this. Yeah, motherfucker, you're in jail for 19 years. Good luck with that. And your your career is destroyed. No, you're done. You're done. You're not getting out early. Okay. I I, um, I tell you I tell you what, we are going to uh wrap up the rational boomer podcast i want to thank jace for joining us today it's always a pleasure to have him and other listeners in it always makes the show that much better i want to uh thank you folks for taking the time to listen i hope you have a great day and uh, we'll talk to you again tomorrow